Remy Ahmed. I want to see more. I want to go more. But I want to more. What I want to more. That part I want to more. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, I wouldn't waste uh, too much of our time because um, uh, we have to go back and uh, some of or some of us that drive by ourselves, we have been thinking we have to fix the tire, we have to fix the tire by the time we are going there. <laughs> so, the Latvia culture in Nigeria is journey so far. The next. <clears throat> Tonight, uh, Philadelphia has been going on since 1951, according to the records. But we can say that the Republic is gaining more ground in the last 15 years. Myth and conception. I remember very well. Uh, we normally think it's a uh, biological. Uh, <coughs> Uh, in those days, when we grew up, Chief Bandele Lupe, that I happened to be my uncle, he, in our area, he established many big dams where, if I tell you the numbers of Tilabia he kept there, until kingdom come, he will not be able to break even. Because by the time you be uh, stocking one, one Tilabia in one uh, cubic mirror, so when are you going to realize uh, the money from that effort? So people think, is bony and it doesn't grow big. Yeah, it doesn't grow big. We all know that was the problem. Okay? okay. Yeah, uh, type of tilapia culture so bad in Nigeria. Nigeria is blessed with abundant water resources from fresh water to practice water. This has given room to uh, varying types of tilapia culture in Nigeria in the last 15 years. The most common is the cage culture gaining ground now. I did my cage culture, and honestly, I was somewhere in UK when somebody sent me, oh, look at this beautiful cage. Uh, can you guess where this uh, beautiful cage is? Uh -huh. I said, where do you get it? He said, no, somebody sent it for me from uh, Holland. So honestly speaking, this is my farm in Nigeria. <laughs> now just to tell you that we have got to that level. Mm -hmm. yes. Like uh, my brother always said, it's not, uh, there's something difficult about all this we are talking about today. We have done it. And we have even done this better than most of the people that are coming around to uh, help us on it. When the young man from Holland brought the tilapias into this country, I would not, I would not, I would just see the topic and not follow most of these things because I know our problem in tilapia. Don't think I don't know anything about catfish. With due respect, I started in modern day aquaculture of catfish in this country. That's when I was working for CHI. Yeah. <clears throat> the young man came to Nigeria. He said, this is a tilapia that when you, uh, the moment the blue stock is sold to you, the moment he give you the small one, it will never reproduce. And definitely I will lose the count of the farm this type of arraignment from this young man has killed in this country. You see, this is the reason why many of us, it's not that we don't have anything doing. This is why many of us come together to fight for this candidate called Tilapia. You cannot come here and drop this, uh, uh, this nonsense uh, in this country again. I remember 
the first company, very popular company in the battle, that got this blue stock from him. They, in fact, I cannot compete with them. But nobody goes to them for fingerings. Why? Because he said, oh, the moment you have it from us, it will never break. Before reaching uh, 150 or 200 grams, he started the breeding. For those of you that buy it, that you want to rear it to table sizes, we are having in the terrain. It's not, it's no longer a, 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 a story. To many people who know us very well. In eight weeks, sorry, eight months, we have one kg tilapia sizes. And you see, it's not that we want uh, go uh, up to eight months. Uh, we have a misfortune of establishing our farm in a dam, the best in terms of water quality established by the federal government. But there's no rope. That was time of the year that we cannot even reach our fish. And you know what happened? Those people that we kept there, they will be they will be helping us with the handles. Yeah? So <clears throat> um, we decided to keep it until we were able to assess the then when we got there the fish are the fish are already overgrown. Uh, people see the access the, the age. We have our record is eight months. But having one kg in eight months, even in world fish, is it not a good thing we are doing? And in most cases, we normally have comfort, uh, we are very comfortable with in six months, 500, 500 grams, which by what standard is good. Our problem here in, in Nigeria is that we cut fish into pieces. And uh, the first son will take the head, <laughs> the father will take the middle. But in most cases, when you eat in overseas, they give you a whole fish. No, you don't. Can you take more than 500 grams? No. <laughs> so, there are lots, a lot of this. Reproduction is one of it, which the reason why I condemned uh, the, the one I said is coming from Europe, natural or uh, all, uh, natural all, all near. Hmm? And I said, no, you cannot continue. What are all those other people doing all over the world? It's monosex. The reflux, the sex, or the fish with sex reversal of moon. And we read, just like any other people, and uh, we research and we discover that it's not harmful to women. Uh, and even if America could last everything, because that's where they care a lot about what you, what you eat, you know, it's something safe. Then we went for the best, I think I will get there, issue of feed. Uh, you know, generally there's problem uh, with the feed. But we, we make sure that we are not buying the feed, which at the end of the day is only the uh, maker of the feed that will make all the, all the game. We will just do all the survey. So we went into partnership with some of these uh, feed making uh, uh, producing company in Nigeria. Uh, fighter feed in Jaws is one of them. And honestly speaking, you can believe it. Uh, they gave us free, I think 15 tons. Yes, 15 tons to experiment with. And I think uh, the other, other company too, Aqua, Aqua. Aqua did the same. We started, then at the end of the day, we have a visitors from uh, Holland where the commented our effort, he said he couldn't believe those of us that started only yesterday we are doing better than what they are doing in Ghana. And at the FCR, at the beginning, even at the end, 1.4, it's not bad. I mean, in tilapia, it's not bad. So, uh, please. 
Yeah, you, you see this way. Just like I said, we have the best uh, from Thailand, and that, that's a gift. And uh, we are uh, quite happy with it, uh, satisfied with the, 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 the performances. Brustock is just like I said, from Thailand, from uh, uh, Europe, and because you see, uh, when you stock a silver color and you want to take a photograph, well, you know it's very difficult. Huh? It can hardly so. But in order to allow people to see what we are doing even before we go into the market, we introduce red tilapia. And in the water when they are there to, to eat and you take the photograph, he has a photograph of my farm because um, uh, the road to my farm is equally good. <laughs> it's equally good. So when they said he has to follow me, I said, no, don't allow it to happen. Because I have to keep the car for some times, take Okada, and uh, not that he cannot take Okada, he's used to it, but it has to be over a very good road. So just like I said, <clears throat> uh, the effort of this uh, Tadam mm, in uh, promoting this candidate in this country uh, from the beginning to the end, it has not been an easy one. The federal government uh, has not been helping at all. It's not that we are looking, you know, even if you have it, I mean, uh, sponsorship, there's something bad about it. Because this candidate, Tilapia, it's exportable. It's white meat. But we are not having that. Upon all, they still allow the farmer in China to, dro to be dropping their, feed, uh, their fish here in Nigeria. We visited Abuja many times. And you see, uh, government, I don't know, you know, they have a, a lot of grammar. They will tell you uh, it's not that they ban. What other the grammar do they speak? <laughs> Restriction. Huh? Restriction. Don't just many of this. And you see, when you see these Chinese tilapia in our market, a kilogram going for 600 naira. No, sir. 600 naira. How? There's no way. I, can, I don't finish my own uh, 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 for 600 naira in Nigeria. And everybody, you know, catfish are spoiled, uh, spoilers. We want one kg, I took even one kg is a small fish by the definition there, isn't it? We want something bigger. And if somebody see five, my own 500 gram. I don't even have money to put it in the carton. I put it in the bag. They will, they will run away from my own. And my own is 1,200 naira per kilo. Who will see that one and buy 600 naira per kilo? Uh, 600 naira per kilo. Uh, will not, that will not buy 600 naira per kilo. And you see, I was in China very many times. We know on conventional way, we know all these substandard material with which people are feeding their, 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 their tilapia. And you see, when the fish grow up to one uh, kilogram, you provide, you use it for fillet. That's, I mean, you remove the bone, you remove the head, it becomes a very highly priced food. Why don't they why don't they send it to the place? You know, we don't eat filet here. Body bone, everything, we eat it together here. So why don't they send it to Europe? Why don't they send it to America? Where they can use it for filet. And in most cases, we discover that most of these fish are not even made for Nigerian market. It was when it was it is rejected, where it is meant for, that now the directed it to our country. In many cases, we explain 
we beg these people to stop this table from being made to discourage our production. But thank God for COVID. You know, there's an uh, uh, advantage in this. The day I read it that all this imported food comes with COVID. If there's anything I ever circulate, I ever broadcast in life, I think this is the information. Almost everybody got it. So, oh, so the summary is just that we have what it takes, what it takes to put the Zapia family in this country. From the seed to, I mean, from Brewstock to the seed to the feed, but the problem. You know, uh, tilapia is is uh, uh, not like catfish, where you can take to the market live. You see, see another investment that comes in now. <clears throat> what we normally do when I have my farm, or when I finish the production in Ikere, I always go with ice flakes, an ice block. I'll break it into it to preserve it until I'll get it to blast freezer. I still have to blast raise it before I keep it, before I start selling it. It's not all that easy. And you see, as far back as the time of Obafemi Awolowo, we know how to do all this. All these things have been prepared for. Go to Ijorolopa. Go and count the numbers of the cool rooms there. This is the reason. All this, they have been, they have been educated in all these things. But what are we people doing about it now? You have the silo for grain? All over. All over. Yes, yeah, well, in the West. Yeah, it's yeah. empty. I'm not, I'm not saying it loud. Yeah, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's there. Why not cold room? So that by the time we finish the production of our fish, it goes into the cold room. And honestly speaking, up to today, if I have, if you have high quality, even the next neighbor, Republic of the Benin, they are not producing enough to go. They want tilapia. Ghana even fumble because of their uh, their, uh, their candidate. Uh, what's, what's their candidate? I mean, they don't allow these fast-growing fish we are talking about. They develop their own stream. They call it a kosumbo. They have a lot of problem with it. They prefer, or if they even want tilapia from most today. Cameroonian, the Cameroonian is waiting for me. It's not about anything. It's waiting for me as we are talking now. It's not about anything than tilapia. So there's sub region of West Africa, there's a lot of especially that in cage culture. You know, do not. We if it all my jack put it again to see my no mugu alo. Ah, I'm going to bend the program something a little bit because he has another program and we'll be leaving. So instead of waiting to take the three presentation before taking the question, please, if you have any questions specifically for him for that has to do with this seed producer, uh, seed producing, please we can quickly add let's say two or three questions or. Um, any short confusion along that line before I will allow him to take his sleep. Mutabana and Kentoni Berry for more. Why short comments? Okay, Doctor. Thank you, sir, for the presentation. Please, I want to ask, let me get this clearly, sir. Are you saying the tilapia produced in Nigeria, the one produced by your station, is not having bones? Is that what you are saying? <laughs> are you saying that? Uh -huh. Because I know one of the major problems with uh, uh, problem with uh, consumption of tilapia is this bone. I can't give it to my children because of the bone. Uh -huh. And if you don't have a country that is producing the one without much bone, I think it's a thing we can learn from them. You know, let's, there is something we call acceptability. We must make this thing attractive to the people so that they want to consume it. If they, if they are trying to identify that bone is a major problem, 
we can do something about it and then make people to accept it. There was a time I traveled outside the country and they gave me pork. I didn't know it was pork I was eating. The facts, everything. They said when it gets to a certain age, even while they're still alive, they will give them something like that when by the time it reach another age, you will not even find or any of those uh, facts. So I think you can do something like that. If that is what is making it to be attractive in other places, why don't you take a plea from them and then introduce it? it? We mustn't stick to what we believe. This is what we do. If, if the technology on ground is a better one. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you for the wonderful presentation, sir. Sir, you've been on Tilapia development for quite a while now. And I want to say to you that we have our own indigenous breed or species called Wesafu. What is your take on this? And what are you doing to help us develop this indigenous species of cyclade in the area? Okay. Okay. My name is Michael. Good afternoon, everyone. My question is this, sir. Um, on tilapia, the cage culture of the system compared to the catfish. I know the catfish, there are a lot of diseases associated to them, a lot of constraints that happen to, that, to them. But in catfish, it's the same thing applicable. But I know one thing for sure is, for a fish to be reared, in the natural environment, just like the cage system, I know they will be able to resist a lot of diseases. Their own resist, uh, resistance, man, they will have more resistance than the catfish because they will be able to withstand a lot of environmental factors. But I want to know the level, like is tilapia fish, um, are they susceptible to diseases or infection like the catfish? Thank you. Sorry. Any other one? Okay. So, you are very limited time. You are very happy. One very more boya. Ali, if it has shed the lower or tilapia, the boya too legu. You very cagey. One very more nipa. The boya ilewa. It has mostly wet sapu. To a nip in lake. Boya at in she shed lower. Then you very keta. One very more boya. And just on the amount of boya. Yeah. Thank you very much. Like. It's not that we have not, uh, we have a lot of money to throw away. I went to Thailand three times to bring their fish. If these advantages are not there, and you see, by the time you go into uh, genetic needs of an animal, you tell them what you want. And the whole world, they don't want more. And the fillet yield. Eh? If it has a lot of bone, the yield will not be high enough for them to make profit. So, where we went, those are the things we know they have the quality their product has. And honestly speaking, you see the tilapia we are, we are talking about, you use it with fork. You know, fork. Huh? And uh, before you leave two, three muzzles, you are already tired. Just to tell you, it's not as full of bone as the indigenous. And it's even the, now, the, the, let us be fair to even the local ones, yeah. is function of weight, size. 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 If you have big size, if you have uh, big sizes, even from the world, mm -hmm. it has a lot of weight. So that's why we are talking of minimum of 500, 500 grams. And you know, in those days, you hardly get even 200 grams in the market. So that's just what makes all the difference. Then, <clears throat> we are commercial uh, people. We are not, uh, we are not professor <laughs> in the university. We are the people uh, are paid. You people are the people paid to do all those things for us. And um, my friend, before he relocated, he gave me some quantity of wasafu that has work on it. I kept them side by side with my imported lapia 
and West Africa. Three months later, when my wounds are around uh, 250, 270, what he gave to me at 10 gram, hardly get to 25 gram. I mean, the West Africa you are talking about. And honestly speaking, if all these things have to be done, if there's a lot of things that are involved from nutritional angle, gen uh, genetics is our own, I mean, from our own uh, commercial angle. Our own is to work with a very good product from, from you people. Not that we put our little resources into, into research. Then, tilapia has high body immunity. High body immunity. And honestly speaking, I need to tell you, uh, a lot of stories people are telling us about tilapia is not true. I kept Bengasius. I kept them because people want us to believe Bengasius are cutting for us. I have some fingernails of uh, tilapia. I kept them together and I reared them for about four months. And something happened. Somebody said, no, fish cannot live in this type of water. The, uh, the oxygen is like is zero. And honestly, do, could you believe it? My tilapia survived. They were not consumed as people predicted. What I'm trying to tell you is, is it's not as delicate as people want us to believe here in Nigeria. It is, it's very delicate. Without this, it will die. Without the uh, power, it will die. You have to reduce the stocking density. If you reduce the stocking density, and like I told uh, the narrator from Egypt, I said the economic way by which I'm using my own aeration uh, system is 30 minutes. 30 minutes to the time I will feed, I will put on my aerator. Then I'll stop it, I'll feed. Then after feeding, 30 minutes again. Yeah, you have to manage all these things. Otherwise, at the end of the day, you go to the market with it up here, nobody will be able to buy. But in the system like in the system like cage culture, that's why you have to be very, very careful with initial investigation of that water. I'll tell you, we can pretty we can tell you where I'm having my cages. I can tell you the dates, precise date when my tilapia will die if care is not taken. When the oxygen from seven will become zero immediately. Octon. Octon. Yeah. It's it's upwelling, yes, it's still the same uh, octon, it's the same thing as uh, upwelling. It, it, it has date when it will happen. All this investigation has to be thoroughly done where you are going. Yes. Otherwise, if anybody tells you, oh, it's excellent, it's good, it's this, all this. And you know the native football knows it. Yes, now. Uh, they will tell you, they are starting time of the day and time of the year. When you see, not even only the the tilapia, uh, all this other that has not got this extra respiratory organ, they will all die, or many of them will die. And it doesn't take it doesn't take time. Within 24 hours, mm. so I body immunity. Thank you. <laughs> So what is that we will be in here? Ah, two ways of food. I want it to see our own imagine they were in university at the new research institute. Contugo, no, she shared the lure because they are commercial. They buy shed and to buy she shed that we can be one for our way. But it's a two way. Yes. The business people was also fun to say. It's a two-way thing because I agree that the, 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 the businessman is concerned with what sells in the market. I agree. But if you continue to leave research for government, they will not do it. 
They will not. Let me let me tell you something. Hmm? When we are going into cage culture, from day one, government is asking us to pay for using their water for this. You, you, you see that? And you see the like, the like. Yeah, you all know them. Don't let me mention them. You know they have money to go into all these things. We never, I never received one couple of grants. We were in a farm. Professor know the lady very well. My first president, we went there together. He has about three sign posts. The third or the fourth one is the facilities we are installing for her. All these sections are funded by different uh, war bank, this, that. How many times have we received that in this country? No, we, it, do, it does come. But it goes to only the politician. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, Nitori Akokoa, the uh, state, is in Abatio in Agege. So, we have two representatives from there. So, that's one of them is Mr. Michael, who asked the question the other time. But the, and the other, the second person is Elder Adediji, Wode Adediji. He will be presenting to us. I want us to welcome uh, Mr. Wode Adediji as he presents to us on the feed mill, feed production in Nigeria, the journey so far, and the way forward. Shall we put our hands together? I just want to say one or two things. I, Mr. Remy Ahmed, is whom we know sincerely as fish. <laughs> In this, yes, yes, Mr. Remy Ahmed is somebody we know as fish. In this country, if you see him, you see fish. Late 88, late 80s, stroke early 90. Remy Ahmed and one of his boys, Sunday Muliru. We are never, I go, I see Sunday Muliru, I say, ah, what about those words, dear Jabai? He said, if you, if you see my boss, I say, eh. Hey, you have boss? He said yes. I said, who is your boss? He said, a man met. I said, wow. The day I met Madame, we went somewhere together to buy fish meal. And that when you introduce her to be Mrs. Remy Ahmed, I say, ah, you are the wife of fish. <laughs> I salute you. So today, sincerely, I celebrate you. And God Almighty will promote you. As you are still in this field promoting it, God will promote you. Amen. Because we are one of those people that allow us to know that we can culture things very well in this country. God bless you. I drop my cup. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yes, okay, sir. Oh, yes, sir. I'm told, feed me. And then when we are talking about feed million, feed million, just let me take one or two things. According to Google, it just said feed mill is a process and or a combination of processes used to produce a processed feed for fish, animal or human consumption. That is combination of those ingredients. When we are talking about feed milling, we are not just saying ordinary greens. It must be in proportion. Though we are, we are not in academic distance. We are just to talk about the, 
the field meal. But it's, according, it's not, you take uh, 100 uh, meals, you take uh, 100 uh, GNC, you take, no, 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 it must be in proportion accordingly. That is, that is that. And then the first, the first thing when we are talking about uh, feed milling, the care of the animal, that is the trans, when the, 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 our forefathers, they are using horse as means of transportation, that is when this issue of feed milling started. But uh, that is according to Bible. That is Genesis 24, verse 32. So that is that is that. Now the historical background of the field mill in Nigeria, of the field mill in Nigeria. I attended one um, training, so seminar, 2006, about only field mill. That is by Gudoye. And now. All this historical background was introduced to us. It was then, we know that it was 1983, Pfizer established the first commercial field mill in Nigeria. That is at one, Erika Atikeja. That is where their first field mill was situated then. And then later, in 1970, the same Pfizer, they have numerous uh, other franchises. But in the mid to late 70s, that is this still works, started local fabrication at Ibadan. I don't know whether the man is still there now or not. That is where they started built, sir. <laughs> that is where they started give us different type of machine that we can use to mill our feet, like crusher, mixer, hammer mill, and so forth and so on. But um, now, in, uh, by 1980, about 500 females were operating in Nigeria. Major ones were Lado Kong, Fiji, Ibadan, Okeafa, Isola, Obasanjo, and so forth, and so on, and Golden Lake in Lagos as well. Those are the fish. And then all these fish, Mila by there, sincerely, they concentrate much on poultry food. On poultry food. So that is why we are happy today that this aqua field and aquaculture is now something we can talk about. Kudos to Tadan again today. God bless you. Now, in 1983, first major collapse of the poultry industry was due to sudden maize importation ban. Sincerely, after COVID, the same thing nearly happened in Nigeria. If you are in the food industry, you will know. To the extent that we ran to federal government, that is uh, the PAN, uh, Portalization of Nigeria, and FIPAN, to call them to come to our aid concerning the maze. But it's only God that saved this industry. So it was then this feed mill, this thing collapsed. But fortunately enough, in 1985, 1986, sharp drop in feed demand collapsed. So in 1990 to 1993, poultry industry recovered and feed told me to calling with about 4% fish feed production. That is when we have light to this fish. Because before then, before that, before then, there used to be one imported 
fish meat uh, in charcoal. In charcoal. Because all these copen copen they are talking about. Copen was very, very recent. So it was this in charcoal there. So if you want to culture fish there, it is only this feed and then our own local meal. We don't have equipment for it then. It's only when when you grind all your uh, material together, you mash it with water. And you use your hand to squeeze it like this. To, su to squeeze it like this. That is how we give it to fish then. But mm, some of the major problem then was water pollution and all other things. But we thank God today. So, by, by 1996, 200 feet of lane accommodated uh, for 60, uh, accounted for 60% of the feed market. Because then it was only Pfizer, only uh, this and that. But these days, if you get here, you see two miller that you can you can mill with. If you go to that, in fact, in many of the the, the the farm, the farmers you have your own small feed, feed mill, which is the best for them. Which is the best for them to mill your feed by yourself as a farmer is the best. Is the best option. But we are coming to that now. Aquaculture is the fastest growing sector worldwide, also in Nigeria. So we thank God for today. Because I know today we are expanding more. Because sincerely, what I saw yesterday, I was marvel. So when I get to our place, I see things to tell people. Because Sincerely, Abatua is one of the major place that we mill. In fact, some people believe that I, I went for a seminar in Abuja as a resource person. Somebody stood up and asked me, say, I, I learned there is a place in Abatua. They said they used to make fake copens. I say, what do you mean? He said they, they make their, their copens. I said, what do you mean by copens? And he now explained to me that not all floating feet are copens. We have our own floating feet in Apatua. So, um, yes, please. Different equipment used for feed milling are here. This one, is locally fabricated pelletizer is small one that any small farmer can can avoid because this is sorry this is the pelletizer and that, that one is the grinder which this small um uh, uh, engine can power either petrol engine or diesel engine can power it for you so and then this is the imported one. This one, they are imported. They are 7.5. This one can produce about a two, about two tons in an hour. But why the other one, the small one, at least can produce about 250 kilo in an hour. So, sorry, this is our extruder. It's it's not clear by the way. It's our excluder. That is the one we use to do our floating feed. Yes, sir. Now, this perforizer. The work of this perforizer is to grind all our ingredients to make it very, very powdery. Very, very powdery. Because as powder as it is, it will cause simple digestive for the fish we are talking about. So we use it mainly for fish feed. Anything you put inside, it will powder it. Yeah. 
And then this is our wet horizontal mixer. We use it to mix before we pellet. So we produce both sinking and floating feed in abattoir. We produce both sinking and floating feed.